Johnny Dollar. Paul Peters, Johnny, at Western Identity Company. Oh, hiya, Paul. How's the weather out there in the city of the Angels? Johnny. Yeah? Can you come out here right away? Uh, what's up? Well, put it this way. How would you like to give some much-needed help in the race for outer space? Oh, well, if you mean take a ride in one of those experimental space capsules... No, uh, I mean... Thanks, Paul, but I'll stay in the cheering section for a while. No, I mean put a stop to the trouble that's threatening to... But, Johnny, we have no proof. No proof at all. No proof of what? That these deaths were anything but accidental. That they weren't incidental to something much bigger. Paul... But if you can find out who's in back of them, who's in back of all this... Hey, look, will you start making sense? What? The race for outer space, remember? Yes, Johnny, and you know it's important. Yeah, and I take it some company, some client of yours has a hand in it. Yes. But they're having trouble. Yes. What? Because although there's no proof, I think I'm convinced, Johnny. Yeah? Well, come on, Paul. All right. Sabotage. Oh. Yes, Johnny. Sabotage. <laughs> Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Western Indemnity Company, Los Angeles office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the flask of death matter. Expense account item one, $180.40 for a plane to New York, then one of the big jets to Los Angeles. Item two, five seventy for a cab to Paul Peter's office on Wilshire Boulevard on the strip they call the Miracle Mile. I've arranged a rental car for you, Johnny, so you can get on up there right away. On up where, Paul? And and you still haven't told me what this is all about. Look here at this detailed map. Just above Santa Barbara. Here. Uh, hey, it looks like that road runs off into the ocean. And a high bluff overlooking the ocean is the Bar Bar Manufacturing Company. Bar Bar? From the names of doctors Joseph L. Barham and Ralph T. Barnwell. They're a couple of top-rate scientists. So what are they build? Spaceships? Ostensibly, they make small aircraft components. But actually... Well, after they were dropped from governmental service, they begged and borrowed a lot of money to set up a little plant. And they've developed a capsule that sure will enable a man to return from outer space. Kind of competing with the government, aren't they? Barham and Barnwell are determined to prove that private enterprise can accomplish more than a lot of inter-service wrangling can. Uh -huh. More power to them. And if they can prove their rescue capsule works, they'll make millions, Johnny, literally millions. Well, I should think so. Naturally, we, as their insurance company, will benefit, too. So far, though, it's cost us a lot of money. Oh, how, Paul? Insurance policies on a couple of their key men who died recently under most peculiar circumstances. Yeah, how? During the testing of this device, but nobody seems to know exactly how or why those men died. Now, if you can find out for us... Yeah, well, I can try. Barm and Barnwell don't want you up there poking around, Johnny, but I've insisted on it, so they're expecting you. I see. So, will you get on up there right away? Sure, why not? Thanks to a good freeway system, I arrived at the Bar Bar plant shortly after 2 p.m. One of the guards led me onto a long steel platform that stuck far out over a wide cove at the edge of the ocean. At the end of it, surrounded by a lot of complicated machinery, attended by half a dozen men, was Dr. Ralph Barnwell at the controls of a gigantic hoist. A long, heavy steel cable on it was pulling something out of the deep waters of the cove. Much to my surprise, Dr. Barnwell didn't seem to resent my presence at all. Yes, Dollar. Here comes the space capsule. This time, the test has to be successful. They, uh, tell me, Dr. Barnwell... Twice before it was plunged in fired into this deep hole at the edge of the ocean under conditions simulating a return from outer space. Everything within the capsule functioned perfectly. The tests were a complete success, except for one thing. Now, what's that? For no apparent reason, for no reason at all. Yeah. The man inside it was dead. I see. Easy now. Lower it uh, Yes. Uh, all right now. Ready on the cradle. And that's why, Mr. Dollar. 
That's why my partner, Dr. Joseph Barham, insisted on making... Insisted on making this test himself. All right, men. Release the pressure so we can open the door of the capsule. All ready? Good. Good. All right, now, come on, Dollar. Yourself, don't you? uh, yes, yes, I'll open it. Uh, yes, stand aside, stand aside, man, so the begin. All right, now, Dr. Barton, did you? Joseph. Yo, doctor. Like, like the others, sir. Dr. Barnes dead. You, you saw it yourself, Dollar. There, there was nothing, nothing inside that capsule that could possibly have killed Joseph Barnes. Yeah, well, now, maybe the autopsy will, uh, Doctor... Yes, of course. We'll have an autopsy, the same as we had on the other two men who died this way, that I know what the findings will be. What, sir? Asphyxiation. But I tell you, it's impossible. If the atmosphere inside it became insufficient or faulty for any reason at all, it would have shown up on the tape recordings that we so carefully checked over. And these young scientists we employed don't miss anything, Dollar. Well, what about a poisonous gas of some kind in there? Poisonous gas? Well, three of these in a row, Doctor. It looks kind of deliberate, doesn't it? The presence of any known poisonous gas would have been recorded, too. Any known poisonous gas? What? Well, isn't that what you said, Doctor? And with all the people in the world who'd like to see you fail with a rescue capsule, don't you think a few of them might be clever enough to make up something you couldn't spot? You're talking about some... By that sort of nonsense? Is it nonsense? Nothing could be placed in that capsule without our knowing about it. You're pretty sure of all the people you have working here? Of course we are, as sure as we can be. Yeah? And what's more, if anything, any device had been placed in the capsule to release this, this poisonous gas you're talking about, we'd have discovered it when we opened the capsule. We'd have smelled traces of it. Well, maybe. And maybe it sounds wild, Doctor, but have you considered the possibility of the man himself in there releasing Dr. some kind Barham, of... Dr. a suicide? No. Good heavens, no. All right, how is a breathable atmosphere provided inside that thing? Two oxygen tanks, primarily, and a minus pressure tank system containing a CO2 absorption unit, plus, uh, of course... Well, what's been done with the oxygen tanks that were aboard? Why, they... Probably been returned to the storeroom where they can be made ready for the next test. You're not sure? I tell you, Dollar, the presence of any poisonous gas. Any known there. poisonous gas, remember? You know that rescue capsule inside and out, don't you? Every square inch. Even the most minute detail. Well, I know nothing about it, but, Doctor, that might be an advantage in my investigation. What? Because I have no preconceptions about why or how some device couldn't be put aboard. I'm afraid I don't follow. So maybe I'm just the one to find out how it was. But that doesn't... Also, that I have a strange little hunch I'd like to follow up. Do you believe in hunches, Doctor? Hardly. As a scientist, I... But, Mr. Dollar, if your hunch can result in finding the killer among us... Maybe it will, Doctor. Maybe it will. <laughs> shot and I knew it. But my hunches usually pay off. Dr. Barnwell promised no interferences and gave me a pass that would get me by his security guards to any department or laboratory in the place. I talked with some of his bright young scientists and engineers and other technicians, not because I expected to get anything from them, and I didn't, but to hide my real purpose. Then I wandered into the storeroom where the oxygen cylinders were kept. I talked to a rather dull-witted character named Pete Prosser. Just about to empty out these here little oxy bottles and go home. I say, didn't I see you up there on the dock with Dr. Barnwell this afternoon, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, yeah, that's right, Pete. And, uh, 
Aren't you the one who opened some of the valves on the outside of that capsule just before Dr. Barnwell opened the door of it? Well, release valves, they call them, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. I open them up real slow so as to let the inside pressure get what you call equalized with the outside air. Or to release whatever was inside that killed it. Oh, what you say, Mr. Dollar? Uh, Pete, uh, where do the oxygen bottles come from that are used to provide an atmosphere in that uh, capsule? Right here in my storeroom, Mr. Dollar. Ah, uh, you fill them up yourself? From a master cylinder of the stuff, something like that, huh? Oh, no, sir. I only issue them out when I get the orders, Mr. Dollar. I guess they don't think I got brains enough for anything much else. But I really have, Mr. Dollar. I got a lot of... Well, who does fill them up for use? Well, now, that's a funny thing, Mr. Dollar. I don't exactly know. You don't know? But it must be some of the scientists they got all around here. But all I know, Mr. Dollar, is they're always full and ready when I get the orders to deliver class number so-and-so-and-so-and-so up to the dock. I come down here and get them and then help install them. Ah. Uh-huh. What happened to the bottles that we used this afternoon? Well, the first thing we done, Mr. Dollar, was check them out up there on the dock. Check them out? Well, sure, Mr. Dollar, to be sure they still had pressure in them in case their running out was what killed poor Dr. Barnum. Uh-huh. But it wasn't. On account of they still had plenty of pressure. You emptied them up there? Oh, no, sir, Mr. Dollar. That's what I was going to do when you come here just now. Uh, hey, you see them here on this rack? Uh, yeah. What have you hooked them up to? Uh, that pipe through the ceiling there. What's that? Oh, that's the exhaust. You see, I just want to this valve, and they empty out in the air where they can't cause no explosion or No, no, no. Wait. Close that valve. Oh, sure. <laughs> Only we can't fill them up fresh if we don't empty them first. Hey, uh, Pete, uh, well, listen, Pete. Yes, sir, Mr. Dollar. Well, uh, I've kept you after hours, and I'm sorry for that. Oh, that's all right. So, uh, why don't you run along and I, uh, well, I'll take care of emptying these flasks for you, huh? Well, now, that's real nice of you, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, Dollar, sure, for sure. I'll see you in the morning. Yes, sir. Well, good night, Mr. Dollar, and thank you, sir. <laughs> When he was gone, I tore over to one of the laboratories I'd visited earlier. There I borrowed a couple of healthy-looking white mice. Then back to the storeroom. I hooked a tube onto each of the oxy bottles and slowly fed the contents, supposedly pure oxygen, into the cage of the mice. Well, for a while, they cavorted about very merrily, and I wondered if for once my hunch had been a wrong one. But then suddenly the mice keeled over, lay there, gasping for breath, and by the time I could shut off the valve, both of them were stone dead. Now I knew how Dr. Barham and the others had been killed inside the space rescue capsule. But by who? And more important at the moment, why? And then I remembered the old Latin phrase, cui bono, who benefits? And the answer came so easily I could have kicked myself. But how to prove all this? Maybe if I took the lethal oxygen tanks up to Dr. Barnwell's office and... Hmm, maybe there was a better way. Yeah, a little less dangerous. Yes, come in. Oh, come in, Mr. Dollar. Hi, Doctor. Well, as long as you're still around, why don't we have dinner together and see? What's that you have there? Oh, it's uh, just one of the oxygen bottles that was taken off the rescue capsule this afternoon. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll fill it here by the door. Uh, may I ask why? Well, because I think the valve has developed a leak, and I just thought you ought to know about it. The valve? It leaks? Sure. Did you hear it? Uh, yes. Yes, well, uh, then we'd best get it out of here. Oh, no, no, that's all right. Sit down, Doctor. I want to talk with you. Yes, but uh, a lot of... Uh, Additional oxygen in here, if uh, if you were to forget and light a cigarette, light a match. I won't forget. Probably wouldn't do a thing anyway. Uh, now, Mr. You know, uh, in spite of your nice reception, I, uh, I understand you didn't want me to come up here and poke around. Well, I'm sorry if you got that impression. It's probably because Dr. Barham and I talked to... Now, you uh, and Barham got out of government service, didn't you? Why, yes, we, we did, because we... Because we want... the uh, security boys found out some things about you they didn't like? I know, that's ridiculous. Doctor, I'm not going to beat around the bush any longer. I should have known there was something phony about your ordering the pressure released in that capsule before you'd opened it up this afternoon. What? It was really to dissipate the poison gas, and it wasn't. What poison gas? 
Mr. Dollar, I told you my opinion of your poison gas theory earlier. Uh, but now about this flask of oxygen you Doctor, offered. now that the capsule works, it's worth millions, isn't it? Works? By killing three good men? The first two, I suspect, were to convince everybody it was accidental. What? Sure. So nobody would be suspicious when Dr. Barham... Dollar. Yeah. Leaving everything to you, Millions. What is this nonsense? And uh, listen, about this leaky bottle of oxygen... Well, now, why get so upset about it? I'm not upset. Then sit down. No, I... Doctor, uh, I said sit down. What do you mean? Done? Yes, sir, that's right. Now, move over so I can call the police to come and pick you up for murder. You can't do it, and listen, listen to me. Well, listen, we, we, we must get out of here quickly. Oh, I'm in no hurry. Now, Doctor oh, Barnwell, listen, that flask there by the door leaking the gas in oh, here. I thought it, it was harmless oxygen. It is, of course it is. Only just please, please let me out, Doctor. Doctor, you try to move, and I'll pull this trigger. So, yeah, but that gas, that that hydrogen oxygen gas. Oh, is that what you really put in that harmless-looking little flask? Yes. The Doctor. same slow-acting gas you used to kill your partner and the other two, huh? Yes, yes. Then you admit yes, it, huh? Yes, I killed him. I killed Barnwell because the plan for myself. You'll Please, put that no. in writing? Anything, anything, but let me out before the gas kills me, too. I, I can feel it now. That we're too late, Dollar. We're too late. Oh, stop blubbering and get up on your feet. Too late, we'll die. Wrong, Doctor. The flask isn't one of those out of the capsule. What? No, no, I pulled this one off the shelf. All it holds is pure oxygen. I hope. I don't know, of course, but I suspect the government will take over. Maybe they'll have something in that space rescue capsule. But as for money, royalties, well, I'm sure that Barnwell won't be able to spend more than in prison. Expense account total, including a couple of days and nights in Santa Barbara on the trip back to Hartford, $431 even. Yours truly, Sunny Dollar. story that's called The Holy Unexpected Matter, and believe me, the title fits. Yeah, it involves a wild trip across the country in search of a killer, a killer who just happens to be looking for me, who apparently knows more about my plans and where I'm going than I do myself, all of which leads up to a really unexpected twist at the end of the yarn. I think you'll like this one, like it a lot. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Paul Duboff, Parley Bear, G. Stanley Jones, Horace Lewis, Tom Hanley, and Bill James. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs>